Welcome to part two of a series of videos covering the work that I did for a local barber shop. On day two, I used my block plane to make sure that all of the edges were flush. And then I sanded the edges where the slats would be applied, and that's because I don't want any unsightly edges visible through the gaps in between the slats. I measured the distance between the bottom shelf and the underside of the top shelf, and then I could calculate the gap that would be needed in between the slats. The measurement was 233 millimeters. From that number, I subtracted the space that the four 40 millimeter slats would take up. And then I divided that number by five, which would be the number of gaps in between the slats. And 14.6 millimeters was the spacing needed. So I cut a couple of small spaces to 14.6 millimeters at the table saw, and I could use these to position each of the slats. I glued and clamped on the ends of the slats, and I used a brad nail to secure the centre because clamping it here would have interfered with fitting the next slat. I could then repeat that process until all of the slats were added, and it looked pretty good. I could then add the slats for the backrest of the seat, but because this was cut at a 15 degree angle, the distance between the seat and the underside of the top shelf on this side was slightly bigger. So I measured that and did the same calculation as I did before and cut some new spaces, this time to 16.6 millimeters. And those slats got secured in the same way. It wasn't until I was doing the second of these units that I realized I could clamp both the slats at the front and at the back at the same time, which for some reason hadn't occurred to me before. Sometimes I just do things without properly thinking them through, but at least I'd save a bit of time waiting for the glue to dry on this one. I used some light oak wood filler to fill the nail holes, and later this will get sanded back and it'll be difficult to spot where the holes were. The next job was to add the brass dowels. I bought this 8mm dowel from eBay, the cost was around £13 for 1m. I ordered more than I needed because I wasn't sure whether to add it to the slats of the backrest too, but after speaking to the client we decided to keep things subtle and just add them to the base at the front and the back. After marking up where I wanted them I drilled the holes using an 8mm brad point bit and I took this nice and slow while I was establishing the hole to keep it nice and tidy, I didn't want to risk tearing out the face veneer. Once I was in far enough I could speed up the drill and the holes came out nice and clean. I cut the dowels using the angle grinder and I cut them shorter than the holes were deep so that I could knock them in flush with the face of the plywood. I used super glue to glue in the dowels. These dowels aren't needed for strength at all as the wood glue holding the unit together is more than strong enough without them, so they're really just here as a design feature. Once I was confident that the super glue had set, I came back with my oscillating tool with the detail sander attachment at 80 grit to make sure it was flush to the plywood. I didn't want to use my random orbit sander here because I was worried about the possibility of sanding through the veneer. Even though the face veneer on this plywood is thick, I didn't want to risk it. And the detail sander gives you much more control over where you're sanding. Then I swapped to a 180 grit pad and polished up the brass to get it nice and shiny. Although later on in the video I'll come back to this again because I wasn't happy enough with the results. I did some final sanding at 120 grit. The face veneer on this plywood was already pretty smooth so it didn't take much sanding. I also made sure to sand all of the plywood edges. And then I did some hand sanding just to soften the corners and prevent any chance of the veneer splintering. I then brushed away all of the dust. I'm going to use water based varnish for the finish because the client wanted the wood to be as light in colour as possible and I'm using my new electric sprayer to apply it. I first watered down the finish by maybe 10% and then I applied it in the direction of the grain. A lot of people have asked me about this sprayer and this is the first time I've used it properly on an actual project so I'll make a video talking about my thoughts on the sprayer very soon. The first coat of finish raised the grain on the ply, so I used some 400 grit wet and dry paper to denib 
and get everything nice and smooth again. I have a video all about denibbing by the way and I'll link to that in the description box below. Then I could brush away the dust and apply the next coat of finish. I applied three coats in total, denibbing in between each coat with 400 grit. The finish was looking really nice now. You can see it has a really nice sheen and it was super smooth, but I wasn't particularly happy with how the brass dowels looked and I wish that I'd sanded them to a higher grit. So I started thinking about how I could polish the brass up some more without having to redo the finish on the panel and I had an idea which I wanted to try, so let's see if that works. My idea was to use an eight mm dowel and some 400 grit wet and dry paper stuck to the end of the dowel with double sided tape to polish up the brass to a higher grit and make it more shiny. After sticking it to the end I trimmed away the excess with a knife and then secured the other end of the dowel in the chuck of my drill. I could then use the drill while guiding the dowel with my hand to polish up the brass and this worked really well although I did have to change the wet and dry paper a couple of times. Then to polish the brass even more I rubbed a piece of cloth onto some green polishing compound. This is a really fine abrasive and by rubbing it onto the brass it gave it a really nice reflective shine. The fine metal particles did make a bit of a mess onto the wood though but because it was already coated in varnish that cleaned off easily with a bit of furniture polish. I was then much happier with how the brass dowels looked. I gave them a light coating of acrylic spray varnish just to make sure that everything was nicely sealed. Finally I added my maker's mark to the underside of the benches and then they were ready to install so I loaded them into my van and took them to the shop. And for some reason Dylan always likes to get into the van to have a look around. I used some cardboard in between the two units just to help protect them. And I tied them together with some ratchet straps just to keep them from moving around. And then when I got to the shop I could place them and try them out. Originally the plan was to fit the units to the wall and the stepped floor with screws but they were so heavy that I decided it wasn't necessary and I didn't really want to add any fixings especially to the parquet flooring if I could avoid it. So what I did instead was to add some adhesive rubber feet to the bottom just so that it can't slide around. These bench seats took about 16 hours to build in total and I'm pleased with how they turned out. I think they should work well. This was my first time working with birch ply. It's pretty expensive stuff, but it's so much nicer than the Far Eastern hardwood ply that I normally use. You can see that the face veneers are much, much thicker, which makes this much better for sanding. There's no risk of sanding through the veneer with this stuff, really. Also, as there are more layers of veneer, that makes it more stable and hard wearing. And also the grain on the edges looks really cool. I have since been asked to do a couple of other projects for the shop too. They need an alcove shelf and some tapered legs for some concrete tabletops. So there's likely to be another one or possibly two videos about those. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already to check those out and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss them. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can also support my channel on Patreon if you'd like to receive early access to my videos, exclusive content, free plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.